Hi Susan Blue Robot here from SusanBlueRobot.com. I'm here today with a new version of Pop-Up Card Studio and I thought I'd tell you, go through some of the um, bits and pieces that I found in it. I'm using Pop-Up Card Studio by Make the Cut and then of course I'll be taking my things over to Make the Cut. You can use whatever cutting program that you use. And first when we uh, look at this, it's down here, it says version 1.1.0 and we can create a card. Now, what we have is, just it still looks the same, we can now though, if I hit the space bar, F6, it brings up my basic shapes and I can pick a basic shape and I'll bring in my, tr my trusty tree. Right, and I can trim that tree as normal by going like that and it goes to the trimming. I can trim here and I can trim up the top to put my anchors. Then if I wanted to go to down to the bottom plane, I click, click on the keyboard P and it takes us to the next plane down. If I wanted to center that, I push C and it centers it onto the card. Now if I had Control C, Control V. So I've now got two of them, Control C, Control V and I've got two of them. Now if I had one over here and say one here and I wanted them evenly spaced, Normally I would have come over here and clicked on this button here to horizontally space. Now you just push the bracket, which is two on from the from the P, and it has the shortcut key as that, and then I put them on the bottom plane, go like that, and now they're all on the bottom plane. Or I could have picked, clicked on B to align them all to the bottom. So, with that said, we'll go through. Now, I'm on the select tool now, which is F1. If I wanted to go to the Bezier tool, I got F2. The um, fonts, F3. The cutting trimming tool, crop tool, what I call it. F4. The um, erase tool is F5 and the your shapes is f6 and i pushed f1 to get back to that this comes in handy and you don't have to memorize it all by what i'm telling you now if you just hover over them you get to know what things are now um, what we didn't have in the other edition is Control c and Control v you can now cut and paste also we have these to select all, control A, control A to select all, to flip, if we look down here it's control M, so I go control M, we'll bring in a shape that looks right. Okay, control F, control M is not working, okay, on the real version it will, you want to rotate it 90 degrees, it's control G. Okay, making him dizzy. You want to flip to the opposite. It's Control K. Now, if you just hover over here, you'll see all the um, shortcut keys, which really does become handy, or especially when you're working on lots of things. Now, if we start with a new project, oh, and you've got all these keys over here that have now got vertical alignment, 
is the bracket next to the P. Bottom to the top is T, to the right is R, to the left is L. Vertical alignment straight up and down is um, V. And, ooh, oh yeah, horizontal is H. So that's much like um, make the cut, only you've got your centre is C and down to the plane, next plane down is P. Okay, so another good feature as well as you should also get to know all these is if we get rid of some of these, control X, control X, because they're both on the one plane. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put anchors on here because I want to show you something. So if I go F2, eighth of inch snapping, what a quad. This is just normal that we're all used to net by now. And I think I've done a few cards, but I think I'm just getting used to it too now. Control shift, which was normal, up to the next plane. Okay. So now, what else we have new? Okay. We're going to take this dog off for a minute because I'm not happy to have that there. So we'll go F1, select the dog, cut the dog away, which is Control X. <coughs> and now we're going to bring in, bring in the bunny rabbit because I can weld that to it. So we'll take him down to the bottom and I'm going to weld those two together. which I could have just gone control W. So that welds them two together. Now the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you something that's really cool now. We do a print preview of that. And that shows that the anchors are all there. Now this is a good exciting bit for me because I don't know if you realize that a lot of my cards and books have backgrounds. So now if you go export Project Shapes, if you export that to SVG and so we'll put this on the desktop so I know where it is and we'll go rabbit tree so now when that comes that will export to SVG and you get your SVG that looks like this. Now, this is not the SVG of the card. This is the SVG of the actual pieces on your card. So now, what you do is you go Project, Render to SVG, and you go Rabbit, Card, Rabbit, Tree, Card. So now what I've just sent out is the SVG of the actual card. Now if I go over to make the cut and I'll show you what we now end up with and this is what excites me a lot now and will help a lot of people with their backgrounds that have been having trouble making their backgrounds for their cards. It, so we'll bring in the tree card which is normal. We've got our to each its own We've got our valley folds, our mountain folds, and our card. Now, if we put that on a plane of 0.5 by 0.5, so that's perfectly here. Now, if we bring in the SVG of the first one that we um, saved, which is this one here. Now, the good thing about this one here is your background's done. It's all in pieces. So I have the background for this here. So if you've been watching my DV my videos, you will know that I like to shadow in to a come out date for 
the fold lines at the pieces. So if I do a inward shadow of minus one and go accept, that inward shadow one is the one I want. So I don't want this one, I want this one here. So in just a matter of two clicks, I've now got my inward shadow of that. This one fits perfectly down here and around your thing. I will do an inward shadow of that one as well. At point minus one, then I'll take that inward shadow and that will become my background. So, with cutting my card, and then these become, say, this would be the sky colour. I have a real dark sky today. And this will become the grass. So that was so quick and easy. So I'd cut my paper out of here and then put it onto here. But you can also use... There's nothing saying you can't just change the colour of this to your sky colour. Right, this colour we're getting. Put this on. 0.5 by 0.5. And then that becomes your print and cut of your sky. Of course, my print preview's got that I... Sh I, I most of the time print my outlines. What I mean by that is I go down to print options and it says print shape outlines. So when I'm doing things like when I'm doing things like say these images from Scrap Factory I take this over to then my images will actually be my images will actually print. I'll take this. I'll cut that. New layer. Paste in place. I'll take this over here. I'll move this to contrast so you can understand. Because I have under here print shape outlines, that when I do a print preview, this is what's going to cut. So the outlines of the face and the outlines of the nose, because if I didn't print the shape outlines of the nose, you would not see the nose because it is the same colour as the face and so on. Like these, this hat here, you wouldn't see the line here. It would just be completely blue. And the arms, there'd be no line features. So... And as I was saying, you can do print with the actual layers that are there because you don't need to give a inward shadow if you're doing print and cut because you don't have to worry about the fold lines because it'll be flat onto the um, uh, the bit that you are using. Now, change that to say green. So that's a good feature and if I do a print preview of that, say I'll, first off I'll take off that print outline shapes and I'll do a print preview of that. So you'll see that you'll have, if the if I had have put the grass in the right place, we can do that. Hang on. We go, put that at 0.5 and put this at 6. Now if we do a print preview, that's how it'll print and then you'll cut your card out using your registration marks. So that is a perfect feature. Now some will say, well why would you need that if you aren't doing print and cut? Well, I want to show you what I discovered this morning while playing with this and testing it out is. I'm going to bring in some wording. Bring in the words hello world and we'll make this be 
click so you can see it. Okay, so now I'm going to give a shadow with that. Because I'm a fan of having my words cut out and put on top. And I know there are a lot of people out there that like doing that too. So I'm going to trim the bottom. And I'm going to trim the top for anchors. And I'm going to put that all in place. Now, we go P to make sure it's on the bottom plane. Okay, then I want to go C to make sure it's centered. Now, I'm just going to tweak that lettering just down a bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put my anchors on the top just so I'm doing a complete thing here so you can understand what I'm actually doing. Putting the anchors is just normal. You can either do them singly or you can do them as a complete platform. In this case, I'm just going to do them complete as a complete platform. I hit the space bar to get back to this plane. Okay, now, first off, I'm going to click on those words and I'm going to go down to this Control Shift C, Control Shift C, and it'll bring up the color bar. Now I've got the wording selected. I'm going to change that to red. Accept. And you see how that's changed to red? Now I'm going to change I'm going to select the um, shadow of that. And I'm going to change that to say yellow as a real drastic change. Okay. And we're going to go to hold down the D key and select that top one. And I'm going to change the color of that as well. To say black. I go accept. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whole lot of that. Go export project shapes. So I'm not rendering the project. On project shapes, I'm going to send that to Hello World on my desktop. Then I'm going to select that Hello World. Oh, and this is what you end up with like this. Okay, so now back here, I'm going to select that Hello World, the upper letters, not the shadow. Yep, the outside, the letters themselves, and I'm going to go cut. I don't want them no more. Now, normally in Pop-Up Card Studio, I would have taken those letters over to make the cut and dropped them in there. But I don't have to do that. So now all I do is go Project, Project Render to SVG, and I go Hello World card. Go save. That will render and that will give me my card. So what we do is we come over here. We go bring in the SVG of the card. Hello world. Card. Okay, we'll turn that white. So what you see is we have our score lines and our cut lines so you do print that's just normal and it's we're going to put it on a plane of 0.5 by 0.5 now i do that so i can bring in my next one i bring in and put that on the same plane so i know they're perfectly over the top of one another this is where the good thing comes in now i go hello world bring that in and i put that on a plane Point five. First off, uh, point five, and I'm going to lock this one for the moment. It's still on, but I locked it. And point five, enter. So that is perfectly over the top of my card. Now, 
this is where the good thing is. Your words are already here for the top bin. And you just pluck that out. Or you just throw that away because here's your wording here that you were going to put on there regardless. So what we have is our outside piece, our actual card. Actual card. Now this, these HE thing, I didn't set that up very good because I chopped the top when I did the trimming. I chopped the top. But your lettering will be just normal and this will be a solid outline and I have my words that I can cut to glue on top of my card and then I have all of these if I want to make colors to go around it I can take this and I can go minus one then I take this I just break apart and this is the piece that I would use in here as my I cut it and then use it in here as my background. So I think this has absolutely made things a heck of a lot easier. Oh, I can do a, we do an inward shadow with that one, accept, and there is your background that you just cut and you glue that in place to show you what I here's I've got this card here that I cut oh, where is it John I cut this colour out of one I ran it through the emboss in ebosser machine and embossed the background so it looked like the plate of a Lego and then this is this the other layer these lettering, well, I just left them on my card. In place. Took me backgrounds away. And what I did is I printed them as normally. So we end up with the card that is easily printed and you can change the colours in Make the Cut to whatever colour you like. You just go like this, break apart. No. You go like this, split. So that's leaving the inward parts of the D, the R, the O separate. Then you just hold the shift D down, say select every second one. And right click and change the colour to say blue and then we do a print preview on that and we have we could have got our colors already all done with just the click of the get down here to project shape and it exits as SVG it does make life a a lot easier for me anyway and I hope that you all enjoy these new features the shortcut keys um, they all are going to be well used by me and this has been Susan Blue Robot at SusanBlueRobot.com with the new version of Pop-Up Card Studio version 1.1.0 Okay, so here's a few more things that um, I've found or has been added since I started the testing. If, for instance, on the uh, uh, later, uh, earlier version, I have all these here and I want to drop it to the bottom plane, everything would drop down. This would drop... Uh, this would drop down here, this would drop down uh, down to the bottom plane, this and this. So if I had wording, it would all just land on the bottom. Now, if I have everything selected, 
like this. And they're all separate pieces. They're all um, single pieces. If I go P for plane, they drop down as the set. They don't all fall down to the bottom. Now this becomes handy when if you notice back earlier in my taping of this, if I had words, and we'll just demonstrate what I mean. Oops, no, that's small so I can demonstrate. This is not a card I'm making, but it will do. And we'll give you, say, a drastic, say, four millimetre thing. Now, originally in uh, Pop Up Card Studio, if I wanted to drop this all to the bottom, the wording, because it's loose from the um, uh, shadow, would all drop so everything in this line would, would all be on the bottom now if I just push P or this icon over here drop to the bottom plane it stays intact this stays in the very middle and the shadow is perfectly around it um, that's a good feature because especially like if you're doing wording and that setting it all up to take it over to um, your cutting program it all works fine. Now, another um, feature is we'll take the happy Merry Christmas up here. Now, if you wanted to copy that and paste another one under it or anything like that, you, you normally have to go up here and go copy and paste in place. Now, like in Make the Cut, we've got the feature. If you hold the Control Shift key down on your keyboard and you drag. You've now got a second copy and a third, control shift and drag and that feature's been added. So we now have the drag and copy feature which becomes in handy because I'd done Because I've been working from once from Make the Cut back into Pop Up Card Studio and back to Make the Cut, I got so used to copying and pasting one thing to another in Make the Cut. And then I was over here and thought, oh, so I held the control shift and moved it along. And of course, it just moved, it didn't uh, thing. So I got so used to that. So that feature was added into here. The other good thing is uh, that was added was uh, oh if by chance we'll go back here do a few back one more down if by chance I should have used the F4 for that right and we'll go select that all and we'll go put onto the bottom plane F4 to trim the top. Now I'm sitting here and I want to go to put my uh, anchors on the back here. Now if I go F2 or over here it's on draw normally now Andy has also added that if you push the F2 and you want the auto quad just push FQ2 and it goes to auto quad for you then you can just put your anchors on if you want arch steps just push S if you want draw normally just push in and it toggles through these um, because I do a lot of pop-up cards and I have lots of bits and pieces this is coming becoming very handy so it's a matter if, you, if you're on just the select tool and you go oh, I'm up to putting the anchors on I'll push F1 instead of going over here and changing everything just push Q 
and you've got your auto quad ready to go. Um, there are two more new features that I um, have discovered before I've released this video, so I came back and added to the video. Oh, I like this video um, editor, it's, I can add into it. Um, I hope this helps, and as I was just saying, I will be back to do more videos as I find things or things get added to this. Um, it is Pop-Up Card Studio version 1.0, 1 1.1.0. So this is a, another release um, with all these good updates and I hope this helps you all. Now, just before we go, there is one other thing that I forgot to mention is that the new thumbnail, thumbnail viewer for Pop-Up Card Studio. You can download the, inst uh, the thumbnail installer and then follow the instructions and reboot your computer and then it'll be up and going. So, I want to show you how... Well, how good I think it is. Um, sadly, I didn't save thumbnails in all my projects, and I have nearly, nearly 300 to go through and save them, so I can just look at them at a glance. But if you've got a project like this, and we used to print preview them, and when we print preview, you go export and save as thumbnail, and then you save your project. Well, sadly, I never done that because I'd get lazy and I'd want to just keep going forward and forward and forward. But with this new viewer, it's much like the um, make the cut um, viewer. It makes it a lot easier to find at a glance what you're looking for. So when this comes through, and I'll show you what we now have. Now, first off, while that's coming through, I'll save this into a new folder. Do it on the desktop, into a folder. Oh, that was what I wanted to do is save it, not try to open it. So we will save it in here. And then if we export the thumbnail, and then we go save. So we've saved this thumbnail with it. Now if we go to my desktop and we shall open that desktop now if we have it on large on icons this is what you see now where it is you used to you used to just see and I'll show you the difference because as I said a lot of my patterns throughout the months have just been uh -huh. no it's going to make a liar of me so they show the icons so now instead of getting just the word PCS and that front thing, you now get your icons so you can see at a glance what you've got in your folders. You used to just get this pop-up card studio thing, but now you get the actual view. So, and I just learnt something that all of these don't have that. If I had them, 
just at the screen they're going to convert to the icon so I think that is another good feature and I think it's well worth getting that it's PCS file viewer 1.0.0 um, and so that was another thing that I did come up with and I will be coming around with more videos of um, new things on this feature as I discover them or I'd be told by Andy but he's letting me just discover what new things it does do so this okay another thing I added before the release was um, the uh, virtual snapshot covering so what we'll do is I'll bring in something just to quickly show you if it's small enough and I want to black out of that just to do something simple I just want to show you something that it's on the bottom most plane we'll turn this around here like this now what Andy has added to the version 1.1 is when you go to virtual snapshot and normal virtual snapshot would be nothing clicked here and then you'd go like this and you would see your background plus your, your um, card and what now what Andy has added and I'll just zoom in a bit here is if you go here and you go say I want I've got it on just plain white paper and say I want the shapes colored I go preview and there we have our print preview of now the shapes are a different color to the background so you get a better idea of what you're viewing and if I go to um, set thumbnail as that and we'll just do a um, save this and we'll just do it somewhere oh, I didn't think of this All right, we'll do robot And then we'll close that for a minute. Oh no, I'll just go if I want to open this. And I want to go to that. Your thumbnail will be the, sh the shaded thing. Now, if I just say that I wanted to do the backs, but not... The shapes I turn off the shape so now I've got the sides on okay so now if I go preview that the pop-up will be the brighter color it, and it makes it a lot easier to see the difference being and I'll show you um, this one is this one's got the coloring of the brown and a normal one is no colouring that this just makes it a lot easier to see at a glance when you thumbnail viewer or when you're going um, render to um, your, your cards now so that's all fine and good you can do that but there's one other thing that I'm really going to say straight off because I got myself a little confused if I was to make or we'll do something drastic I'll do the candy cane and say I've got nothing at the moment hang on nothing ticked in the in the project check colors now this is drastic and I wouldn't be saving it as this but I want to show you that what we've got is this is the color of the card so you've been able to do this all along generate your cards thing as some um, colored um, cards 
But if I was now to go and go sides, and now when I render it, the sides are now going to be the, the colour and leave the paper. The, it, it, you'd think that it would do the opposite, but it's not because what the um, colour projects is doing is turning the taking the colour away. This is the colour of your cards, all these. This candy cane is the colour of your cards. But what the, clicking the sides is going to do is take the colour from your card and change it. So then what you have preview is you have the colour of your normal card is your striped candy. So there's nothing saying that I can't now go uh, I'll set that as the thumbnail. Go save. Now when I go to my desktop and we will have a look at that. I'll bring it up to a big one. Um, extra large. So you can see it. I don't normally have mine at extra large. So that's how it's saved. So it's a lot easier to save as thing. But what um, I do want to stress is just the the this like if I was to go okay deep mar marble preview and I've got it on sides. So it leaves the actual card, which, and except for the sides, it takes the sides and renders them as a card, as a colour. Now this is only, this doesn't affect the, it doesn't affect the cut to um, machine or project render or um, the project shapes. It only affects your virtual viewer so it affects the thumbnail and it affects your picture that you render to show what your card is going to look like. Um, and it's going to make it a lot easier to view your cards as opposed to, have I got one in here? It's Hello World. If I take that too big. See, this is just plain white on white with the dark background. And if I was, if I was to do that, it would show this. Hang on, we all do this, and I'll show you the difference in this one. So that's what we've got so far. And I'm going to do the virtual snapshot with the palettes, say the side and the material. Um, green granite well it doesn't really matter but okay and then I go pre preview so it's what I've done is the side so it's taking the side color and made that a color and it's leaving the words the actual color of the card that I picked For the virtual snapshot. So I've now gone from this um, icon. I know what I'll do. I will say two, hang on, we go, set as thumbnail, save as, we'll go two. So um, just previously I showed about the thumbnail viewer that Andy's released. So now 
No, that's not what I want to do. I wanted to show you. So this is what we have. We have one now that's easier to see than the, just the white on the white. So um, you can have them coloured. Of course, you know, like even just having them plain, plain coloured wood. Wood. And see, because I've got a darker wood, it just shows it a lot easier and better. So that's uh, another quick thing that I wanted to show you that's in this release. Um, it uh, will make viewing your things a lot easier in your thumbnails. And I'll be back when I find more things. And now back again with a few more features. Um, this one, a long time ago, the problem with um, things fighting with each other, shapes fighting with each other, came up and both Andy, Brian and I had different ways of combating it. But now Andy has made it a lot easier. And what I mean by fighting with each other if I put this square here and I do a copy of that one then I go to the bottom plane of one put that on and I'll put paste in place and I'll put that side by side we'll take that to the bottom plane now this is the problem this one is fighting with this um, what I call fighting with it it wants to take it and if I was to put this one on on the bottom, then the back one would fight with that. So what we'll do now is say that there was ways of getting around this. I've done videos, Brian's done in examples in um, webinars. Also Andy pretty sure done um, examples in webinar and uh, I just used the um, shortcut keys I used F2 Q for quad auto quad and then I used shift Q to toggle through over here the snapping position to a qu an eighth of an inch um, and then I just put on me anchors this is just normal putting on the anchors control shift to get to put this anchor on control shift now normally this would be oh another thing is if I was on here the other, other um, older version of this, you had to go back to the select tool to hold the D key down to select to go back. Now you can be on any one of these keys and hold the D key down and select and it will take you back to the one you want. So that's another feature that's been added. And now if we push, we go to the crop tool. And we go to exclusive rec and we hold the control key down if we go like this to the part and there we have it holding the control key down we just filled in that part and no longer are those two fighting which with each other we've added it in without having to do the the copy that um, go to the other bit paste in place, fold down, fold back. Now it's just a matter of two clicks of the button, hold the control key down, go like this and fill it in. So it's the control, exclusive rack and um, the cropping tool. So uh, that will help with a lot of things my bench seat was one of the things that everyone was making at the time the bench seat 
is now I will try and update that video. If not, I'll just put a note to say to come and do this th sort of thing. I might even do a video of one point uh, of that with an A after it. Um, another feature is um, is the virtual snapshot. Uh, first off, I want to put some lettering. I got F three or the lettering. We'll bring in. Hi. Add. If I put that here, well, to this, what did I do then? Hold. Oh, and bring that up. That's it. Right. So then, all you have to do is go back here, and the same thing is add it to here so you go control and it added in okay so what I was going to say is all right we'll go D I'm gonna change the color of this 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 bit this one I've got selected so first I'll go to select tool select that and go color change and we're going to go uh, no, not white. Let's see. Um, red. Except. So now I have this as this color, this green, and we go to virtual snapshot. Get print preview. Now bear in mind, I have my projects to shapes, not side to shapes. And my paper to white, and there we have that this is green. And because it would normally be just the color that's the generic, but because I changed the color of this one, it has changed in here. So if I bring that in and print preview, see so this is yellow on top. So if I was to go. Here and I'll change this to um, cyan. Accept. So the, this is good for when you want to do your um, tiling. So that's now blue, green, red, and if you want to export. Um, as a big picture to show on the blog, on your blog what it's going to look like or on your forum what it's going to look like you have it in color now or you can set as thumbnail so that's now set as the thumbnail that will come up in your viewer as I showed before now we'll get a new project same size, okay. Uh, my um, mat's a different colour and everything because I've been playing with changing the colour. Right, so first off, I want to talk about this now. Because I make a lot of cards that have paper piecing, paper piecing on the pop-up cards after I have them, this is a sample of several different things that... I wanted to show that this one here, this balloon here, is one solid background plus pieces like this. Plus pieces like this. So, okay. Now, um, these ones, these ones are layered on top of each other. So you've got pieces that are laid on top of each other. And it's uh, like your hand 
is over several bits and pieces. So, but because I spend a lot of time in Pop Up Card Studio making my making my pop up um, card pages, pop up pages. This is what I do normally. Is I used to get the size here, make sure it's the perfect size, um, and I do the shadow here and take it across. And if it wasn't right, I come back here, get the shadow and things like that. Now with this one, this one is oh yeah, it's over. Oh, it's got cover, cut out pieces. Okay, so we'll do the whole, select all, all of him, and do a copy. I take it across here, and I sort him out. So he's he's in color. He comes across colored. Now it's not a um, textured image. It's the colors. So if I was to make him the right size here. Give him a shadow here. Go accept. Say I want two or three, so oh, don't want to do that. Select all of that. Make it the right size. Hold the control shift down, do a shadow of that. So that duplicated it, holding the control shift at the same time as dragging it. I've got two. And see, so we want a little of one of these. And we put, we raise this one. We do the crop at the bottom and because I know that it's not flat because it's my pad and it hurts. I'm getting to why I'm doing this, but just bear with me. Selecting all of them, pushing P or down to the bottom plane, put him in position. Then we put the little guy, might shape size him a bit smaller. Put him down the bottom plane. We put our anchors on them. Control shift up to the thing, up to the right thing, go F2, Q, shift, Q to toggle through, eighth or better. So I'm not taking my mouse from one side of the thing, uh, one side of the screen to the other now. I'm just using my shortcut keys. I'm going to have to get used to saying the shortcut keys as I'm using them. And then we have our card. It's just a plain card. Now, normally, so normally in the older version that we would have then generated our snapshot and this is what we would have ended up with. Um, but now, if I was to go shapes, now this is is just for getting your preview done. Then I will take the um, penguins back over to make the cut at the right size. So now when you look at it over here, it's coming in colored so you then get a better view of what you are exactly making so you haven't got just the white on white you've got the color and then we can go thumbnail and we can also render that to picture off. So I just done export rendered picture. And we can accept that and then it'll render again to the picture. 
now if you come over here your F1 what you need to do then is select them do a copy take it back to your new make the cut and you go paste in place I just take the because I don't I no longer need the shadow of them you could cut so there my pattern that's my tux of penguin to go on top of my card and we come across here and it says do you want to view it I do want to view it because I want to show you and it comes on the other screen sorry and this is what you've got you've got your picture that is so it gives you a better idea of what your card is going to look like so now what I do with them selected I just go weld then I go export shapes so you don't to export if I went back here to export shapes like this is not a good idea because then you end up with this outer bit just the slither of um, with the robot or with the penguin gone and these are all cut where it comes to um, with these pieces you'll have join this is how your hand your arm would look so then you have the hand to go in it and then you'll have this bit chopped out so this will just end up to be a little tiny slither here and this neckline will be a little tiny slither it won't be your full piece to put your other piece laid on top and the same here your um, beak would be out of your chest of your um, penguin and things like that so that's why I took that and I welded it oh sorry and this one and weld it so then you go normal rendered project SVG and you can still do your background shapes SVG and there you have yeah, SVG of your card. And your SVG of your backgrounds. So this one fits perfectly nope this one fits perfectly over the top of there and you get rid of what you don't need I don't need this so I push that and delete push that and delete and depending on if you want them for tracing and these two fit perfectly in there I just move them to the top there you have your card So that's just normal then it's entirely up to you now I've exported them what I normally do is I normally just go back to there and then I save so I have exported my pattern I've now put these back on so when I come to do this project again say if I want this little guy and I want him bigger I can just alter him because he's already there and I don't have to go looking into another folder and stuff so then I just go save that so um, 
so we'll leave this part here and we'll see if there's anything else to show you be back shortly don't go away this has been Susan Blue Robot at SusanBlueRobot.com if you'd like to watch any of my other videos there's plenty on my um, SusanBlueRobot.com site and if you'd like to purchase Pop-Up Card Studio or make the card, if you follow links from my blog, you'll help support my blog. And I always, in, in future videos, I also have a couple of new toys to show you. Um, but that's not in this video, not PCS related. Okay, well, bye for now. Thanks for visiting and come back soon.